Earlier in March, good times were had. It was bright, sunny, before the, um, the... Resident Evil 6. And for context, you're going to have to look it up, because I'm not going to say more than that. But it was also the PlayStation 2's 20th anniversary. And as that being my all-time favorite console, I have many good memories. There's plenty of games in a huge library that I fully enjoy. But there are 20 games in these 20 years, and I want to look back at those 20 that fully resonate with me. And I guess a bit of a forewarning and a better understanding of myself, I love JRPGs. JRPGs are my favorite genre, they have been one of my biggest through most of my gaming life. So there's going to be quite a few that takes up most of this list. There will also be only one game per franchise, keeping it simple with only one title. And I guess maybe also if you don't like the number three, because while I was making this list, I realized third entry in that franchise is possibly my favorite, which brings me to my first title. Now I can't go through this list without mentioning at least one or two horror games, especially from the Fatal Frame series. You play as Rei Kurosawa, who searches around in an abandoned manner, taking pictures for her photography job and fending off scary ghosts with a special camera. Though most of the scary encounterings are in the manor, you also see stuff like handprints on the walls or feet underneath the stairs in your apartment. This will also be the last game we'll see from the Fatal Frame series until the Wii U and the 3DS. I was no stranger to the Final Fantasy series ever since playing a couple on the PlayStation 1. So when I saw the newest entry coming to the PlayStation 2, I was super excited. With this being Final Fantasy X, which I fully enjoyed, I love the characters, the music, Generally, the story I really loved as well. Back in the 90s, we had two of the biggest fighting game companies, Capcom and SNK. Then one day, we finally got a crossover. A crossover between these two companies through multiple games on multiple systems. Which is one game that mainly speaks to me the most. And that was Capcom vs. SNK 2, Mark of the Millennium, 2001. Though the game came out on multiple systems, I mainly played it on the PS2, so that should count. Now, what does 1998's Godzilla and Capcom's Devil May Cry have in common? I should have been the one to fill your dark soul with light! Not much, but that does lead me to my next game, Oni Musa 3, the third entry in Capcom's Demon Slashing action series, where instead of controlling the first game's protagonist, Samonosuke, you as well play as Jax, played by John Reno. Within the story, Jax is transported to Samonosuke's time, while Samonosuke was transported to modern-day France. Final Fantasy Tactics, Tactics Children, and Ark the Lad. None of these tactical RPGs of the past got me prepared for the strange and explosive world of this Gaia. Amazing anime art style, super crazy attacks, and raising your levels up to 9999. And instead of adding the first game, this one is mainly for a sequel, This Gaia 2, Cursed Memories. Adding around the same style of action from the first game, this one introduced my favorite protagonist in the series, Adele, and he's quested to defeat the Demon Lord to free his family of a demonic curse. Coming along with his journey is also the Demon Lord's daughter, who is also the main love interest. Now for a hard choice between Silent Hill 2 or Silent Hill 3. I even consider Silent Hill 4 for this list, but at the end, I'm gonna go with Silent Hill 2. And as much as I love the story to Silent Hill 3 being a continuation from the first game, I enjoy more of the psychological horror that was going on with James Sutherland as he searches through Silent Hill for his dead wife. This game also introduced a lot of the fan favorite monsters like Pyramid Head, the nurses. Overall, I, I generally like this one more. Even though this is a continuation from a four-part series, I still enjoy his sequel trilogy a lot more, aka 
.hackGU. Now what is .hack you may ask? Well, it's a massive multimedia franchise spanning from games, to anime, to manga and novels. I've talked about this series before in a previous video known as Gaming Items I'm Proud to Own, but to make a long story short, these are the games that pretty much helped me get into video game collecting. I drove all across Houston trying to find all three parts. If I had to choose another fighting game series that I fell in love with, it has to go to Guilty Gear. And I went with the version that I played with the most, which was either Guilty Gear XX Action Core or Isuka. But not only is the gameplay fast and exciting, but also the heavy rock music in the background by series creator Daisuke Ishiwatari is just mind blowing. My go to back in the day was Kai Kisuke or the fast kicking jam, but the whole cast was memorable really. And to this day, I still keep up with the series, playing Extrude and waiting for when Strife comes out. I don't think it should be much of a surprise that I would have at least one Gundam game on this list. And between this and Federation vs. Xeon by Capcom, I decided to go with Mobile Suit Gundam Encounters in Space. A sequel to a previous title known as Journey to Jaburo, it also adapts even more story elements from the main Gundam timeline, the Universal Sensory, as well as continuing to adapt the original 70s anime to 90s style animation. The majority of the battles are in space and a versus mode. While also keeping with the story of the original anime, it also adapts stories from OVAs and games that they even come over here, like Side Story Blue Destiny. <laughs> It's sad that we never got the rest of this series from this next entry, but we are hitting the halfway point now, and this spot goes to Sakura Wars So Long My Love by Sega and Red Entertainment. The fifth title, not including all the spin-offs, to the steampunk tactical RPG with dating sim elements, which is all entirely stuff I enjoy in one game, and I am beyond excited for almost a decade, the next entry is coming to the PS4. Jack. Welcome to the Toonami Holodeck. Now let's race. Let's do it. Jack is back in a whole new dangerous world, and he's battle ready. Toonami's giving you the chance to get in on the action. We're giving away 30 PlayStation 2s and 500 copies of Jack 2, rated D for teens. This world is better left to Jack. Watch Toonami all this week from 5 to 7 for the toll-free number. Can we ever finish this race? Starting off the second half of this list goes to the game about war, love, and snakes, aka Metal Gear Solid 3. Set during the Cold War, Naked Snake has his mission to go down to Russia to take down the one who taught him everything he knows, Big Boss. The game has been named one of the greatest games of all time, and it's no lie. From the music to the characters and story, everything about this game is memorable. Next up on the list is another game that will live through the test of time, with its open beautiful land and larger than life creatures, Shadow of the Colossus. You, aka Wanderer, travel across a sacred land, hunting down these dying creatures known as Colossi, all to bring back the woman you love, but is there maybe a secret intent from the voice that guides you? You'll have to find out yourself. So luckily, there is a complete remaster and port on the PS4. Before even knowing what Persona was, I discovered the Shin Megami Tensei series through other titles like Nocturne, Devil Summoner, and the main title on this list, Digital Devil Saga, a two-part series about a group of people in a post-apocalyptic world who have been infected to where they turn into demons during battle. If you played previous SMT titles, especially Persona, you would definitely recognize a lot of the demons that you fight in battles. I think it's important that games should be considered as an art form, and this next game is definitely one of the most artistic you'll see. Okami, made by Capcom side studio, Clover, brings its beautiful Japanese style to life. You play as the goddess Amaterasu as she fights off demons that have played the land. As you journey through the game, you learn new paint strokes that either help you in battle or progress through the story. The backgrounds are beautiful, including the characters, looking like it all came out straight from a painting. This is another one that got a HD remaster on the PS4, and in 4K, it is stunning. Okay, okay, I need to tell myself I need to add at least one music game. But what's to go with? Res? One of the many DDR games? Amplitude? No. This is why I was going to the super insane guitar rockin' Guitaru Man. 
a simple or simply insane story about a young boy who is granted with a super guitar that transforms him into a hero known as Guitar Man. You use the power of music to fight off the aliens known as the Gravillian Empire. Have you ever wanted to take control of a mech, become a mercenary to take on multiple hardcore missions that will test your will as a pilot? Well this is why I love the Armor Core series by From Software. And with so many titles, which one to choose? That would go to Armor Core Last Raven. Though not much different to the previous titles and gameplay, it still makes your heart pump with all the mecha action. Like any Armor Core title, you have free reign on how you want to customize your AC, from color to all the different parts you can choose from. This will also be the last AC game on the PS2 till its movement onto the PS3. If I had to choose another game that just screams art in motion, I'd have to go with Odin Sphere by Vanillaware and Atlas, taking its characters and themes from Norse mythology and fairy tales. Instead of being more of a traditional RPG with turn-based combat or tactical, Odin Sphere plays more like a side-scroller action game with RPG elements like a leveling system and magic. You go through the story with a couple different characters, each with their own style of gameplay. And another quick bit, this one also got a PS4 remaster. I like to think I've played many insane games from Japan before, but nothing is as crazy as God Hand. Developed by the same company as Okami, and sadly Clover's last game, God Hand is like a mix of Fist of North Star and Devil May Cry. And what I mean by that, it's a crazy martial arts action game with a bunch of kooky and crazy characters. Why is it called God Hand? That's because our main character, Gene, was gifted with the God Hand to defeat the evil forces that wants to take it from him. Well, there sure are a lot of Capcom games on this list. Aside from Capcom, it was very good at experimenting on new IPs that either stayed popular or had a small cult following back in this era. Oh well, second to the final spot to this list is Devil May Cry 3. I don't think this series, let alone this title, needs any explanation. But there are a couple things that definitely need to be pointed out, like giving us a better Dante, and introducing two main state characters in the franchise, Virgil and Lady. I'd like to start off and say, I still need to play Xenogears, but that's back on the original PlayStation and we need to get to the final game. Which brings us to a close with the Xenosaga trilogy. I know I said one game per franchise, but since each game is a chapter to the full story, like Dot Hack, it all counts. For over 4,000 years, humanity has found the means to leave the Earth and explore the deep edges of space. This is an epic space journey to save the universe from an upcoming alien menace. Following the main character and scientist, Xion, the combat robot Cosmos, and the crew of the Wogglin. Though not Xenosaga, the Xeno series still lives on with the new Xenoblade Chronicles series. Thank you everyone for stopping by. After a long road through the PS2 library and many edits to choose the right game, it is done. If you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed going through memory lane, leave a like and comment. And I will see you all next time.